What's up guys and welcome to part 2 of our shockwave tutorial. Um, if you haven't watched part 1, uh, be sure to watch that now. I'll link it on the screen and also a preview of this whole thingy. So yeah, in the last part we created the basic look of the scene. Uh, added these particles, the shockwave, nice flare. And now I'm going to show you how to finalize this stuff. So pretty much, let's go ahead and create a new layer for element 3d text call it element and then go ahead and drag element on there all right this is loading <laughs> and then drag it down below our optical flares um, let's create a text for this thing I'm just gonna type in tutorial and the font I'm using is called Nexabolt by the way it's pretty nice I like it a lot and Go to our element layer, go to custom layers, custom text and masks, and select the tutorial one. Then just go to scene setup, if it lets you, I guess, scene setup. All right, go to extrude. Now we have some nice looking 3D text. Go to presets, bevels. Um, I think I used the detective one and just add some nicer textures to this. I like to use the Pro Shaders um, pack which is by Video Copel as well I think and yeah I'm just gonna add the black steel one instead of the um, shiny one over there and then instead of the chrome one I'll leave the chrome one uh, which is basically the side um, I'm gonna add something like metal grunge something like this to the second bevel um, so we have some nice like chrome thingy right um, like yeah you, you see that this is the that one and the chrome one is just giving it like kind of a highlight <coughs> so press ok on that one and let's just hide the tutorial text thingy because we don't really need that right now and let's work on our element layer so what we're gonna do here is uh, go to render settings ambient occlusion enable that this is gonna give us some nice um, let me just disable the depth of field for now actually it's not really affecting this at all which is good um, but yeah this is giving us uh, some nice shadows where the where there's contact between the letters or where in the edges can't really see it from this point of view but you get the idea this makes it like look a little bit, a little bit better increase the radius a bit but not too much um, then let's go to scene setup and change the environment because this is like really bluish right now I should really go ahead and download some more nice environment thingies but I'm gonna use the studio warm because this is like the most red thingy there is and increase the saturation a bit to make it a bit more orange so that's gonna give us some nicer reflections on there and actually I'm gonna go to the metal grunge one and increase the reflection of that a bit alright click OK and that's already looking a bit more like it's in this scene and what we're gonna do now is work on the lighting we're just gonna pretty much make this blend in a bit more first of all I'm gonna add a parallel light select a nice orangish white warm color click OK and this is gonna um, light our text from the back so move this to the back of the text and what we have to do now is go to our shockwave layer press AA to bring up the material options and um, click click on accept lights to turn that off so the light is not going to affect um, the shockwave layer so um, I don't know what's up with my preview like it's getting really pixelated when I move stuff I think I gotta clean my disk stuff or something but I don't really mind um, so this is our backlight and let's go ahead and add a new light let's make this a point light make this a bit more reddish like that click OK 
and let's move that back a bit so it's like further away from our text and like down a bit maybe to the left a bit more forward so it's giving this thing a bit more of a highlight and the thing is just like really just play around with the light till you have something you like and actually um, this is like not really a nice reflection over there so I'm just gonna go to the environment options bring on the saturation a bit click OK ok that didn't really change much but whatever this is just a tutorial I don't really have to make it perfect so um, let's go ahead and add a new uh, a new light again let's make this a uh, parallel light again make it kind of orange again and this is just gonna be to have like more of a highlight again so move this maybe up a bit so now we're getting some nice reflections on top of the letters alright that's looking good and now let's composite this into the scene a bit more um, what I'm going to do is add a curves adjustment to our text and let's change let's leave it at RGB bring in some more contrast make it a bit darker and just add a simple S curve then go to the red channel and crank that up a bit to make this whole thing a bit more reddish like that so it matches the scene and what you could also do is move it below the shockwave okay that looks fucking retarded <laughs> never mind um, alright so this is our basic look of our text maybe let's bring down the blues a bit bring in some more green to make this more orange that's looking good um, another thing I'm gonna add is a levels adjustment just to bring in some more black to the text so they can tell the difference that's looking good and yeah that is pretty much the look of our text but now we gotta animate this whole thing so um, let's just keep it simple um, uh, what I did is um, like a lot of animation keyframes and all that but I'm just gonna keep this rather simple so go to group 1 um, maybe go like forward 20 frames first of all so then go to group 1 um, particle replicator position Z make a keyframe there and then go to your know, particle look multi object enable that and go to the um, displacement let's keep this at 0 here uh, let's maybe bring this up a bit keyframe that um, so this is going to be like the way you want it to stop animating. You'll get that in just a second. Uh, then keyframe the rotation randomness at like 3%, uh, maybe like 8. Alright, keyframe that. And what we're going to do now is press U on your keyboard to reveal all the keyframes. Go to the very first frame and just go crazy, like increase the rotation randomness by a lot, the displacement by a lot. And then. Um, bring this whole thing back in Z space so it's like coming from back there alright um, I did something different added some more effects but I don't wanna um, like those plugins you probably won't get that easy so I'm just gonna use a simple opacity fade just on the first frame I'm gonna have a opacity of 0 then go forward like 3 frames and bring it up to 100 and Another thing you should do is add motion blur to the element layer and that's pretty much going to help a bit. So alright, um, then go forward like a couple of seconds to like where you want it to almost end and um, bring down the rotation randomness to zero, the displacement to zero so it's like you just solo that layer and it's like coming in and it's like slightly rotated and then it's just getting like tighter and stuff you know what I mean that's what she said <laughs> 
All right. <laughs> um. So the next thing we're gonna do is, uh, or you could do, is add some uh, camera movement, and let's just. All right. It's let's press U here. So that's the frame where um, you want the text to be revealed. So let's just go to our camera, press P for position, make a keyframe there, and then on the very first frame of our composition, we could go ahead and um, move back in Z space a bit. I don't like when the right parts of our flare are um, revealed. And on the other hand, um, let's go to our flare, move that back in Z space a bit. And maybe scale it up a bit, bring down the brightness a tiny bit, uh, like that, and then move it off screen again. And all right, now we can go there and bring back the camera a bit more on the very first frame to have it like kind of zoom in. Okay, like that. That's all right. And now what it's gonna do? Let me just change the quality to half. Now what it's going to do is um, let me just reveal the keyframes. It's just going to zoom in as this uh, pops on and that's just going to add some more nice motion blur to these particles and also I don't like like they kind of stop there and there so I'm just going to go to the emitter bring the X size and Y size up a bit more like that. Maybe even more Y a bit more alright so that's good so now it's um, the camera is moving in while the text and the um, shockwave are coming on and it looks pretty cool so um, let's bring that up to full again alright um, what you could do now is um, go to your element layer and as this um, kind of rotates uh, back and like goes to its final uh, thingy like final look you can make this like go back in Z space a bit now let's just um, do some simple math here so it's at position 0 uh, for Z space now because we want this to stay in focus since we have um, depth of field so we're gonna press AA um, first of all go to the frame where um, everything is like where it is right now and um, press AA on your camera to go to your depth of field options and just keyframe the focus distance at this frame like where the text came in where the camera moved in do a keyframe there so this is at um, 1244 and just keep that in mind and on our element layer we want that to go back a bit so this is going back by let's say 400 so maybe even too much but yeah, now we're gonna go to this one and add 400 to that. Maybe I think Artifacts is that smart, so we can just go there and type in plus 400. Let's see. Yeah, it actually works. <laughs> so, yeah, that's um, just to make this stay in focus. But what I wanna do is I actually wanna change the Z position as well. So I just wanna, like, I wanna go there and follow the text kind of so I'm just gonna do the plus 400 on that one like you could do, do either way but I prefer to have it like follow the text so that is that so let's just go there easy ease all of these uh, frames uh, keyframes just select all of them press F9 on your keyboard that's just gonna make the animation seem a bit more smooth and yeah Jesus, this is a freaking long tutorial, but I like to like go in depth and explain what I'm doing exactly and all that. So yeah, what I did at the end is um, to shorten things up. Uh, what I did at the end is um, add Twixter to the shockwave to make it go backwards, like kind of close again, like you see at the stars like this, and it's boom going big. And I added just added Twixter to the um, to the uh, shockwave layer and typed in uh, on speed I typed in minus 100 so it goes back uh, to the first frame you know like go small again 
And yeah, I'm just gonna show you how to add a nice color correction to make this whole thing look a bit better. So let's create a new adjustment layer. Um, you can use Magic Bolt Looks for this. Let's just drag that on there. Click Edit. <coughs> and wait ages for this fucking thing to load. Tutorial is taking ages already. Sorry about that, guys. But I hope you guys prefer that I actually explain all the detail and stuff and not just do this, do that, and go there and do that. And yeah. Freaking looks like my After Effects just crashed. Let me just pause the recording for now. Fucking hell, man. Yeah, I guess that's it for this tutorial. Um, yeah, I guess you guys know how to do some nice color correcting, just add some contrast, change the colors up a bit, and all that stuff. But, fuck my life, I hope you guys still enjoyed this, but this is what I gotta deal with. Um, yeah, if you guys have any other requests, then just write them in the comments down below. Hope you guys still learned something, even though the last, like, one or two minutes were missing, but... If you guys really want to, I can make another tutorial on how to, like, color create motion graphics and that stuff. And, yeah, other than that, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Leave a like if you guys learned something, and if, leave your request down below in the comments. Great grammar right there. <laughs> Alright, see you guys. Have a nice day. Bye.